previously on Dark Lord's Halloween Review. Michael Myers has escaped from the Smith's Grove Sanitarium and is now on the prowl for teenage babysitters. Will Dr. Loomis be able to stop this monster? And will Lori ever get a call from Ben Tramer? Find out now. At the Doyle house, Lori is babysitting Tommy. I don't like that story. I thought King Arthur was your favorite. No, not that Arthur. This Arthur. Laser Man. Neutron Man. I can understand why. Tarantula Man. Hey, Tarantula Man will spawn a very successful franchise. Meanwhile, at the Wallace house, Annie tells Lori that she just spoke with Ben Tramer and told him that Lori is attracted to him. Lori becomes angry and embarrassed and begs Annie not to say anything to him. Then the dog Lester starts barking and we see Lindsay, the girl Annie is babysitting. Annie accidentally spills butter all over her shirt and pants and removes them while Michael watches. Bo gets upset he didn't see any nudity. God, what a dick. Michael then goes to another window when Lester sees him and barks at him. Lester's barking again and getting on my nerves again. Oh, never mind. I guess he found a hot date. Then Annie gets a call from her boyfriend, Paul, played by an uncredited John Carpenter to ask if she's down to fuck. So Annie takes Lindsay to the Doyle house and inside both Lindsay and Tommy are watching the thing from another world. Hey, that's how I spend my weekends. Annie wants Lori to babysit Lindsay for her, but Lori is reluctant, but Annie promises to talk to Ben Tramer in the morning and tell him that they were just fooling around. Well, he'll be disappointed. Now she's off to fuck. Then Michael Myers pops out in the back and kills her for her speeding comment earlier. Tommy then sees Michael carrying Annie's lifeless body back to the Wallace house. Lori doesn't believe him even though she saw Michael appear and disappear earlier. Meanwhile at the Myers house, Dr. Loomis scares the shit out of the same bullies we saw earlier. Suddenly, Sheriff Brackish jumps out behind Dr. Loomis and startles him. God damn, Brackett, did you go to the same ninja school as Michael Myers? Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. You can either ignore it, or you can help me to stop it. And if you are right, damn you for letting him go. He didn't. Michael escaped on his own, you asshole. Yeah, better pray your daughter isn't dead. Back at the Wallace house, Linda and her boyfriend Bob arrive. First we go inside, right? Then we'll just talk a little. Then Annie will distract Lindsay. That's when we go upstairs to the first bedroom on the left. You got it? Okay, first I rip your clothes off. <laughs> don't rip my blouse. It's expensive, idiot. Trust me, you won't need that in the morning. Then Michael silently watches them, getting it on. Okay, moving on. After fucking, Linda tells Bob to get her a beer. Michael then jumps out of the closet and kills him. He just stands there wondering how he broke the laws of physics. Then Michael shows up as Bob's ghost. See anything you like? Well, they do. Then Michael kills her via autoerotic asphyxiation. After Linda dies, Michael picks up the phone. Hello, I'm calling about your car's extended warranty. Back at the Myers house, Dr. Loomis is waiting for Sheriff Brackett when suddenly he sees the Smith's Grove car, Michael hijacked, and Loomis begins running down the street. Lori then walks to the Wallace house to check out what's going on. She walks upstairs and sees light from a jack-o'-lantern streaming underneath the bedroom door. She opens it and sees Michael's Halloween decorations. Ah! 
God damn, he takes Halloween very seriously. Lori runs out of the bedroom in the hallway when Michael reaches out with his knife and stabs her in the shoulder. Damn, she survived falling down a staircase while this guy died from in Die Hard. She even has superhuman strength. Lori screams for help and runs into the porch of another house, but no one would help her. She didn't run to cross to the Doyle house, but she lost her key. Yeah, I don't know why she needs Tommy's help when she punched through a glass door. Yeah, she gets inside and tells Tommy and Lindsay to hide. Suddenly, Michael leaps from behind the couch and tries to stab her, but he misses, and Lori stabs him in the neck with a knitting needle. <laughs> well, Lori deserves a breather after what she's been through. Outside, Dr. Loomis is still walking down the sidewalk when Sheriff Brackett's car pulls up and he tells him that Michael's here. Meanwhile, at the Doyle house... There's nothing to be scared of. Are you sure? How? I killed him. No, you didn't. Tommy and Lindsay run back into the bedroom. Lori scurries into another room and hides in a closet when Michael breaks into the closet. And Lori stabs Michael in the eye with a coat hanger, causing him to drop his knife and she stabs Michael. And he's out for the count. But uh oh, he's back. Tommy and Lindsay leave the house screaming and attracting the attention of Dr. Loomis. Michael grabs her by the neck and begins to strangle her. Lori fights back and pulls his mask off. Luckily, Loomis shows up and blasts the motherfucker. Damn, Dr. Loomis is a thug. What's the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, it was. He then sees that Michael has vanished. That was Halloween. The film was a financial hit and a widely influential film within the horror genre. It was largely responsible for popularizing slasher films, especially in the 80s, and helped develop the slasher genre. Halloween also popularized many tropes that would become completely synonymous with the slasher genre. It also made Michael Myers a pop culture icon synonymous with horror and the Halloween holiday itself. Halloween spawned a film franchise comprising of 11 films. Also, in 2006, the film was selected for preservation in the United States Film Registry by the Library of Congress. As for me, I love this film. It builds great suspense with its fantastic cinematography and its amazing theme and its amazing score by John Carpenter, giving it a very spooky atmosphere. Lori is also a very likable character, as she sticks to her good morals, as well as being a quick thinker, and she can hold her own against Michael. Michael Myers himself is a great antagonist, as he's both scary and mysterious at the same time. You never know why he wants to kill people, he just does it. In addition, Donald Pleasance is great as Dr. Loomis, especially with his spooky monologues. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Overall, this film was great. I highly recommend it, especially on Halloween night. That's why I watch it every Halloween. So I give it five pale Shatner masks out of five. And I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye.
the old Girl Scout comes through again.